From the 2015 Southern Kentucky Book Fest, I'm Barbara Deeb. This is Outside the Book. And now we're taking you outside the book, and I'm so honored and just delighted to see you. Thank Sally you, Bingham Barbara. joins us. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very happy to be here and grateful to the library and to WKU and to all these people who make this possible. They do, and, and your book, The Blue Book, uh, The Blue Box, rather, I'm sorry. You know, you talk about the inspiration being just this day and time in our digital world, how in so many ways we've lost the art of corresponding, of writing, of putting a pen in our hands. Yes, emails don't really fill the ticket. This book, The Blue Box, is based on a box, a blue box of letters from my great-grandmother, my grandmother, and my mother. So it spans 1850 to 1931, the lives of these three very adventurous, very interesting women all good letter writers. And the only reason I'm sometimes pleased that there is email now and no more letters is that some letters have, are pretty hard to read. Not literally, but because of the things they're saying that maybe wouldn't get into email. Who knows? Pretty nasty things do get into email, though. No, that's very true. Yeah. And so, you know, we talk a lot about uh, this. Well, I talked with Mary Ellen Miller you know, when she was writing the book that she wrote, and it was about her late husband, there's a there's a sense of detachment that you have to you make. You have to, yes. Yeah. I don't think I could have written this book while my mother was still alive. Uh, she would not have wanted her love letters to my father to be revealed. Right. They need to be revealed because they're really an amazing set of love letters detailing their four-year courtship in the 1920s and early 1930s. But she would have been embarrassed by that, you know. However, she saved her letters, and I think anyone who saves letters has to realize that eventually somebody is going to read them. Otherwise, surely you would burn them. That's a very good point. And uh, maybe it's time, if you're watching this, to write a love letter. When's the last time you wrote a love letter oh, to someone? Oh, it's rare. It's very rare. It is very yeah. rare. Help us understand your process in writing. How do you, do you have a formula? Do you have a schedule? How's that yes, work? Yes, I have a schedule. I have had it since I was a teenager, oh, which okay. means I missed out on a good deal of life. <laughs> but you have great <laughs> books, Sally. Yes, indeed. My, new, my next book is a biography of Doris Duke just about finished, which is a Farrar Strauss book. My deadline is June 15th, so I think it'll probably be out sometime in 2016. Another very complicated, very interesting woman. I had access to her huge archive at Duke University in Durham, and I've really enjoyed three years of recreating the life of this woman, an icon of the 20th century. And if someone were to write the story of Sally Bingham, what, what would that contain? <laughs> a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's the process, right? It's the yes, process of it's writing. it's the process, it's... yeah. Yes, and, and to answer your earlier question, I do have a very fixed routine. I'm always at my computer by about 9 a.m., uh, stay there until mid-afternoon. I get up every now and then, thank God because I really don't think you can create literature unless you're willing to spend your life on it. It can't be a hobby. It has to be the real center of your life. And I've managed to do a lot of other things too. I know you probably know about the Kentucky Foundation for Women, which I'm very proud of. It's now almost 30 years old. Uh, the Sally Bingham Archive for Women's Le Le History and Culture at Duke University, which is an archive for women writers particularly Southern women writers, not entirely that. And Duke University is taking very good care of them, and they will be available to undergraduates at Duke as well as to scholars for the endless future. So that's another thing I'm very proud of. I'm fortunate in being able to do things like that, and I need to take advantage of that opportunity. You know, when we talk about Southern women and the Southern voice, in your opinion, has the, the Southern women's voice, woman's voice changed over the years? Yes, I think we've gotten a little more guarded. You know, when you think about Flannery O'Connor, who's one of my great icons, and how daring her short stories are in her novels, I'm not sure we 
we are always equal to that level of daring. Maybe because we're so much more exposed with social media and therefore more likely to have to deal with a lot of backlash. I think the daringness of Southern women writers is very important. It has to do with our closeness to an oral tradition, which is usually quite unfettered. People will say things that they may later regret, and that makes interesting writing. So Doris Duke is next, and then what? I don't, I don't know yet. I'm thinking about the next book after that, but I've, I'm not sure yet. Well, continued success. Thank you, Barbara. And thanks for all you do. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We've been talking with author Sally Bingham. From the 2015 Southern Kentucky Book Fest, I'm Barbara Dean.